We get a lot of new homeschoolers who join the page saying, I just started out, I'm totally overwhelmed, just help me, tell me it's gonna be okay. And so I think just having the opportunity to get on and, and encourage these families to say, I know that you can't really see the light at the end of the tunnel right now, and this is looking really difficult, but let me tell you, I've been there, and I can tell you there's so much blessing to be had from this choice that you've made to, to, to homeschool your kids. Welcome to Homeschool Talks, a podcast by HSLDA. This is a show about all things homeschooling, from practical tips to inspiring stories and everything in between. You can find show notes for this episode along with our other Homeschool Talks conversations at hslda.org forward slash podcast. And if you want to be the first to know about new episodes, as well as upcoming guests and topics, sign up for our email list using the link in the show notes. We're so glad you've joined us today, and we hope you enjoyed the program. Here's your host, Jim Mason. Hi, I'm Jim Mason, president of Homeschool Legal Defense Association, and this is another episode of Homeschool Talks, where I get to talk to interesting people in homeschooling land, and I trust that you'll find them interesting too. I'm very excited today to introduce Katie Van Horn. She's a second generation homeschooler. She's homeschooling her own kids, and she's stepping into leadership roles out in uh, California where she lives. I met Katie at a recent conference in North Carolina, and we had a, a conversation at lunchtime that made me think uh, that, that we'd like to share her story with you all. So welcome, Katie. Yeah, thanks for having me. So let's start with your personal homeschooling journey as a kid. How did you start homeschooling? Yeah, so my journey started in 2001. Um, I was leaving sixth grade in the public school system and was headed into seventh at the local middle school. Um, and I just really had no interest in going to the middle school for a number of reasons. Um, but I approached my mom and I asked her, we knew a few people who homeschooled. I didn't know a whole lot about it. But I asked her, um, you know, would you consider homeschooling me? I, I really don't want to go to the middle school. I'd like to try something else. Um, and my mom's response was, absolutely not. There's no <laughs> way I'm homeschooling you. <laughs> um, but my mom had grown up in kind of a difficult situation. She didn't have a lot of support growing up and kind of um, raised herself in a lot of ways. And um, she in high school had dropped out i think she was about 15 when she found out she was pregnant with my brother um and so she never completed high school she um she had a lot of insecurities about how um she would be able to teach uh me as a homeschool teacher and so she said we'll put your name on the wait list for the local charter school but there's no way i can teach you i just i'm not equipped to do that and so over the course of the summer that conversation was at the end of the school year probably may over the course of the summer i think we realized my name was not going up on the wait list <laughs> um, and we got towards august we realized something needed to be done and so i approached her again and i said i really don't want to go to the middle school will you please consider homeschooling me and she said um uh, you know, I can't make any promises, but I'll start looking into it. I'll start researching. So she got in touch with um, a local friend of ours who had homeschooled her kids all the way through. And this woman was just very encouraging. And she asked my mom, um, do you think the Lord might be calling you to homeschool? And my mom said, you know, I, I, I'm starting to feel that maybe he is. He's kind of backing me into a corner here. And, um, and she told my mom, if the Lord calls you, he'll equip you. Um, you don't need to be dependent on your own uh, abilities. Just trust that the Lord's going to give you what you need to be able to homeschool. And that, I think, really started our journey. She um, got a lot of uh, encouragement from that conversation. And so uh, over the next few weeks, my mom got in touch with a, a sweet woman named Patty who had just started a brand new Christian co-op in our town, our little small town here. It was perfect timing. Um, Little did we know Patty would later become a really close family friend. She was there at the birth of my oldest kids, um, but she was the one who really facilitated us, started homeschooling and um, helped my mom figure out curriculum and 
all the legalities, you know, that was before the state of California had legally recognized homeschooling. Um, I don't have to tell you that because I know you were the head litigating attorney on that case. So thank you on behalf of all of us who are now benefiting from that. But um, yeah, she she and that homeschool group had a huge impact. I really don't think my mom would have been able to do it if not for their encouragement. So I'm so thankful for that group. So um, your mom was ha had dropped out of high school, but she had the courage to give it a go. Um, how did she, you know, kind of come to grips with um, committing to what five, six years of homeschooling with you? Mm -hmm. Was it was it uh, once she's once she got rolling? Did she really um, come to love it, or was it a continuing struggle? She definitely did. Yeah, um, I think she saw that we had a closer bond, a closer relationship and being a Christian family, being able to have that discipleship at home and be um, in God's word day in and day out and pointing to the Lord and everything we did. Um, I think she really saw that that was a blessing. And I my family, by the way, was not I'll just be open with you. We were not a traditional homeschool family. Um, we had a couple remarriages in our family. So I have step siblings on both sides. I have half siblings on both sides and I have adopted siblings. And um, so we did not fit the typical mold of your average Christian homeschool family at that time. And I think that might've been a little intimidating to some, um, maybe in, in the homeschool world who had been doing it forever and didn't really have anything else. Um, but yeah, she just got so much encouragement from these kind families who came along and helped. And um, I still had siblings in the public school system, in the public high school while I was being homeschooled. So I think she saw that contrast between um, their experience and mine. It was just a, a very stark contrast for sure. Did um, any of your other siblings or step siblings uh, start homeschooling as well? Um, my older ones didn't. They finished out at the high school, but then my two adopted sisters who came later on, um, they did. They were homeschooled all the way through. So, yeah, started a trend, I guess. <laughs> yeah, you, you, you're the uh, trailbreaker there. Um, how did your homeschooling experience prepare you for future education and work life? Yeah, you know, um, Homeschooling gave me so much freedom in terms of choosing curriculum, um, how I did it. I wasn't stuck behind a desk six hours a day. I was able to pursue my interests. Um, I was able to take my schoolwork. We live in a beautiful county here on the coast of California, so I could take it to the beach and study, and I could be out learning and growing out in the world um, and interacting with people on a daily basis. And so I, I, I think that being able to interact with people of many different ages and different lifestyles um, that I wouldn't, you know, when you're in school, you just are, are with your peers. They're all the same age. You have one teacher, but you're largely uh, influenced by the peers around you. But I was out being influenced by people of many ages and um, people with a lot of wisdom who had a lot to share. And so I think that helped me a lot. Um, yeah, having the time to pursue things that I was interested in that I, I felt I was gifted in and I wanted to um, explore more that that definitely prepared me for some of the things I'm doing today. So um, did you uh, plan to go to college and take the SAT and all that sort of thing? Um, you know, I did. I, I was very interested in culinary arts from a young age. I had started apprenticing when I was in high school and homeschooling really gave me the freedom to be able to have that time to do that during the day. Um, I, I ended up going to college for a little bit. I studied theology um, and then came home and ended up jumping right back into uh, culinary arts. But um, yeah, I, I did take the SATs my junior year in high school. Uh, and it was funny because my mom was very, very nervous about me taking the SATs. I don't think so much because she thought I wasn't smart. I think it was more a reflection on how she thought um, about her own education and whether she had was equipped to teach me properly. Um, and we had had kind of a rough couple of years. We had been through adopting my two youngest sisters who were one and a newborn. And um, so we were kind of thrown into the world of social services and everything that comes with adoption. And um, so we had a lot of distractions in our schooling. Um, but 
I took the SATs. I ended up testing right around the 90th percentile. It was right at the 90th percentile. Um, and I excelled particularly in math and language. And, um, you know, obviously those are kind of the, um, the kind of more important subjects they look for on the SATs. And so I, I don't say that to bring glory to myself by any means. I think that was all the Lord's doing, but um, I say that by way of encouragement because I think parents need to understand that if you if you love your child and you want what's best for them, you want a good future for them, if you have the right resources and the right curriculum, you can give your kid an excellent education regardless of your own level of education um, or any areas that you might be lacking. So, yeah. So anything you'd like to say to your mom directly uh, after this experience? It sounds like she's a pretty brave woman. She is. Yeah. I mean, she she knows how grateful I am. I'm homeschooling my own kids. So I think that's evidence that mm -hmm. I think she made the right choice. But I was very um, thankful that she was willing to make that jump and, and take that leap of faith to to try it out and, and give it a go. Yeah. So you pursued culinary arts. Where did that lead? Yeah, so um, I started at about 15. I started apprenticing in a local French patisserie and um, started learning under some amazing chefs. And uh, slowly over time, I just uh, I started working my way up with more and more skilled chefs that I was learning from. Some of them uh, had taught at some of the top culinary schools in America. So I got this kind of one on one education without all the debt that comes with college. Um, and I slowly worked myself, my way up through kitchens as a prep cook, then a cook, and then eventually became a sous chef for many years. And then eventually was running my own kitchen, um, supervising a team of chefs. I was a, a chef supervisor. And um, I did that before I had my kids. And now my husband and I own our own culinary arts curriculum for homeschoolers. And so, um, yeah, all of that prepared me for where I am now. When did you um, start having kids? Um, my oldest two will be 11 next week. And then um, my, my son is eight. So um, I was only 23 when my oldest were born. So you, you said your oldest two, you have twins? Yeah, I have identical twins. Um, they're mirror identical twins, which is a lot of fun. So they have identical DNA, but one's right-handed, one's left-handed. Um, and what happens with mirror identical twins is that often you'll get one that's a little more right brain tendencies and one that's more left brain tendencies. So that's been really interesting with homeschooling, <laughs> um, you know, choosing curriculum that suits both of their learning styles and both of their needs and giftings and abilities. They're very different. It's amazing how two people can have identical DNA but God has just created them with these unique little souls that you get to um, kind of study and, and dig out. What are your giftings? What are your abilities that we get to hone in on? So, yeah, it's a lot of fun. Did you ever uh, question at all whether you would homeschool them or, or did you uh, just jump right in? No, we just jumped right in. I think um, my husband was a little hesitant when we were dating, I remember. Um, he said, you know, I'm not sure how I feel about it. Um, I don't remember ever being worried about it. I think I knew that we were going to get married and I figured it would work itself out. And, um, when our girls were born, he, I'll, I'll never forget. They were, they were in the NICU. They were born premature and they were all hooked up to machines and just so tiny and helpless. And, um, I remember he looked at me and he said, they're never going to public school. Um, <laughs> and that was it. So he, and it's funny to even say that now because he's, you know, our biggest supporter, he's a hundred percent on board. So yeah, we've, we've been in it since the beginning. So you, you've been homeschooling for a, a few years now. Um, what prompted you to get into homeschool leadership in your area? Yeah. So we joined our homeschool co-op about seven years ago. Um, and it's just been such a huge blessing. It started out really small. It's actually grown a lot since we started. Um, but it's just been such a blessing to see these families come together and make new opportunities happen for our kids that they just wouldn't have otherwise. And um, and so as the group started growing and um, our, our leader um, is just such a great leader, she does a great job, but there was a lot more work. There was a lot more responsibility. And so I think I just kind of naturally um, 
started jumping in to help. And um, this year we filed as a nonprofit. So that was a lot of work. I kind of, I'm, I've done a lot of administration. So I jumped into that role and started working on all the nonprofit stuff. And um, yeah, and then I also, I run a Facebook group uh, locally for Christian homeschool families. We just offer encouragement and support. We have about 300 families on there. Um, but I just, I had worked in leadership in children's ministry in our church. My husband and I have both been in leadership for multiple ministries. So I think it's just kind of naturally, uh, we're kind of naturally inclined to to pitch in and help out with those things when when the need arises. Well, in that, uh, in that role as a uh, homeschool graduate, homeschool mom, and homeschool leader um, in your area, and you know, you speak people from all over the country will be listening to you. What do you see has changed since you first went to your mom um, asking to be homeschooled, and now looking back from the perspective of being a homeschool mom yourself and in leadership? Yeah, you know, I think there are so many new opportunities. I think one with technology. I remember back in the day to order curriculum, you had to go through a paper catalog and just kind of read the description and hope that you were choosing the right thing. You didn't have the option to get online and flip through a digital catalog and, um, you know, see your curriculum in person online. Um, I think parents, as homeschooling has grown, parents have become a lot more innovative. Certainly here in California, I see parents kind of rethinking how they do school and kind of creating these different types of pods and um, kind of thinking of new ways to create opportunities for their kids that I think are really exciting. Um, so it's it's changed a lot. And especially, like I mentioned earlier, you know, when I started uh, the state, had incorrectly presumed that homeschooling was not legal. Um, and so I remember back in the day, there were families in our community who were just a little more cautious, I think. I think, um, you know, they didn't want their kids necessarily outside playing during school hours if they had particularly difficult neighbors who they were worried about calling CPS or something like that. Um, Nowadays, it's just so widely accepted, especially after COVID and all of that, you know, people doing school from home. Um, I mean, people don't bat an eye anymore when you tell them you homeschool. Um, so I think that has created a much more warm atmosphere uh, with the public. And um, it's not under quite so much criticism as it used to be. Um, and there are just so many new options. There are so many options even in our county here for homeschooling. So there are just so many new ways to do it. You're not, you're not on your own as much as, as you used to be. There, there's a lot of support out there. Speaking of uh, post-COVID, has your group seen growth uh, after COVID of people who maybe never thought about homeschooling before? Yeah, absolutely. I think we've probably about tripled in size since COVID. Um, so yeah, huge growth. What are the challenges for you as a leader with some of the uh, newer families who maybe hadn't kind of grown up thinking about homeschooling? Um, I think they just need a lot of encouragement. It you know comes back to that mom that encouraged my mom early on, just telling him if the Lord's calling you, he's going to equip you. He's going to help you do this. Um, many of them don't have the benefit that I had of doing it as a first generation homeschooler. They're jumping into it fresh and it's just a new world. So um, getting them the support they need coming alongside and saying, hey, what can I do to support you? How can I pray for you? Um, you know, what do you need? How can we help you in this journey? And giving them encouragement, um, you know, being a homeschool parent is hard. You're going to face a lot of criticism. You're going to face snarky remarks from people. And I think what makes it harder is that it's not like a normal job in that um, probably 95% of what you do is within the four walls of your home. It goes unseen and you don't have a boss patting you on the back saying, hey, great job today. Um, so I think it can be easy to get discouraged and feel um I don't know, just uh, that you're not appreciated. And so I always recommend that families kind of write down uh, your purpose in homeschooling, your reasons why you want to homeschool so that you can look at it and reference it often and kind of have that encouragement. I think um, for those of us who are Christian homeschool parents in particular, um, our aim is to honor the Lord with the way we're raising our children. We know that someday we're going to be called to account for the time that he's given us with them. And we want to be found being faithful in that. And so um, 
you know, sometimes you have to wake up every morning and remind yourself, I'm going to do my work under the Lord today. I'm going to do it with a joyful attitude. You're going to speak volumes to your kids in that. And you're going to have a joy and a fulfillment in homeschooling that um, just comes from having that right heart attitude towards the Lord in it. Well, what I found encouraging when we met uh, down in North Carolina a couple of months ago um, is that uh, people of your generation are stepping into this uh, role with great enthusiasm and providing a uh, community for you know this this whole new generation of, of homeschooling families that has been you know really just you know put on steroids because of COVID, which I agree with you. Um, lots of people because of their experience through COVID, uh, learned that it was kind of nice to have their kids at home with them more often and and um, saw the opportunity to participate more in the lives of their children. Um, and so it's, it's a real encouragement to me to uh, get acquainted with uh, folks like you who are stepping up into uh, the leadership role. And I think I've always told people long ago, even kind of before, um, you know, when we first started homeschooling our kids, uh, back about the same time, well, maybe a little before you were being homeschooled. <laughs> we we may be old, old. We're not we're not in the pioneer generation. My my wife Debbie and I, but we're kind of in the next generation of of homeschoolers. And I just think it's so important uh, for homeschooling families to find a community of uh, other homeschooling families to kind of plug into. Um, it just seems like that makes a huge amount of difference both for the parents and the kids. And so you're doing it both ways, the co-op and the support group. Um, how, how does the support group, you know, play into, um, you know, the, it, that's kind of amazing that you're doing all three things, homeschooling your own kids, um, running a, a co-op and a support group. How does the support group really play into all, all of what you see? Yeah, so the support group is just online. Um, we do have opportunities for people to post different um, play dates and things on there, um, but a lot of it is just posting encouragement. Um, we get a lot of new homeschoolers who join the page saying, I just started out, I'm totally overwhelmed, just help me, tell me it's going to be okay. And so I think just having the opportunity to get on and and encourage these families to say, I know that you you can't really see the light at the end of the tunnel right now, and this is looking really difficult, but let me tell you, I've been there, and I can tell you uh, there's so much blessing to be had from this choice that you've made to, to, to homeschool your kids, um, to let them know that, you know, this has just been my own experience, and I like to encourage other families with this, but I love that homeschooling allows us to educate our kids as whole people, right? Body, mind, and spirit. Um, that absolutely the academics are great and we get to give them this custom education, but we also get to focus on things like life skills that um, just are not taught largely in schools anymore. Certainly not here in California. We cut those programs a long time ago. Um, but then also to focus on our kids' heart attitude and um, to make sure that they are building a strong moral compass. And for those of us who are Christians, like we talked about already, to have them firmly rooted in the truth of God's word, there's so much blessing that comes from that. Um, you know, our kids can have all the knowledge in the world and they can have all the facts and figures memorized and have a great education. But if they don't have a right heart attitude and they don't have the wisdom to apply those things well in their life, their education is going to be a complete waste. And so I think to come alongside these families and encourage them that um, you're going to be able to give your kids such a total, complete education. You're going to uh, educate them as whole people, and there's going to be so much blessing in it. And let me tell you, um, you know, from my own experience, because I've been there, um, I just love the opportunity that we've created with with both of these groups to be able to come alongside those families and help encourage, um, as these families did, you know, 22 years ago when my mom was starting, um, to be that now to kind of be a catalyst for other families is it's really a blessing. Well, I'm going to give you the last word. Any uh, any words of wisdom, advice, or do you know any jokes? Anything? <laughs> 
Um, I'm not very funny, but, <laughs> um, you know, like I said, I, I would just encourage families, do your work under the Lord, not for the for praise of men. Um, know that if you're feeling ill-equipped, the Lord will equip you for the work he's called you to. God delights to use imperfect people to accomplish his work. Um, so seek him, pray for wisdom, ask for help in that. Um, and, and really seek a community of people around you who are like-minded, who know what you're about so that when you go through those rough patches, they can help point you back to the Lord. Hmm. Well, thank you so much. It's a real encouragement to me to speak with you again. I was very encouraged when we first spoke uh, a couple months ago, and, and I'm sure that many people listening today will be encouraged as well. Uh, so thank you for joining me today, Katie. It, you mentioned an online curriculum uh, for the culinary arts. Is there a way that people can find that? Yeah, so we spent the last year and a half writing that curriculum, and now we're in the editing and filming phase, which is exciting. So we're planning to really sit next year. Um, we're on social media right now. We're on Facebook, Three Oaks Kitchen. Um, on Instagram, it's the number Three Oaks Kitchen. And we're planning to launch a YouTube soon with some free lessons. But um, if parents get on and see uh, our social media, we'll be posting lots of updates. We're planning to have a discount um, specifically for HSLDM members, so they can watch for that too. Oh well, that's great. Um, we'll put uh, we'll put that in our show notes as well. So anybody that's interested in following your uh, your new endeavor can find you easily. And if you've enjoyed this episode, please share it with your friends. Would you like uh, to get upcoming podcasts delivered right to your inbox? Sign up for the Homeschool Talk emails list. Uh, subscribers will also receive exclusive content and will be able to submit questions to address on future podcasts. So make sure to subscri subscribe and submit a question. And if you're not a member of HSLDA, we'd love for you to join us. Our website is hslda.org. Um, you can go to homeschooltalks.com slash join if you're interested in supporting other homeschool families through your membership with HSLDA. And you might consider making a tax-free donation to support the work that we do here. And that can be found at homeschooltalks.com slash donate. So thanks again, Katie Van Horn, my guest, and thank you everyone for listening. Yeah, thanks so much for having me. Today's program is made possible by Mom Possible. Step into this engaging, interactive space for practical support from moms who are right there with you in the day-to-day -day of homeschooling. You can browse our library of tips and resources, see how other parents are answering common questions about homeschooling, or join our mentoring group for deeper community support. Get started at mompossible.org. That's mompossible.org. Thanks for listening to this episode of Homeschool Talks. If you've enjoyed this conversation, will you do us a favor by sharing it with a friend or leaving us a review on Apple Podcasts? As a reminder, you can find show notes for this episode along with our other Homeschool Talks conversations at hslda.org forward slash podcast. And if you want to be the first to know about new episodes, as well as upcoming guests and topics, you can sign up for our email list using the link in the show notes. That's all for now. We hope you enjoyed this program and we'll see you next time.